When you spend enough time on the road, you're bound to run into an assortment of mad people. There's a peculiar breed of travelers where you always find one or two, and you're absolutely certain to run into them on a ride like this. And they are the cyclists. My fellow two-wheelers, who are also traversing the globe through equally harsh terrains and environments, but all running on biofuel and an engine that produces only about a quarter to half a horsepower. But for them, it's more than enough. I've seen and met heaps of them along the way, while riding through scorching deserts and crossing freezing mountains. The craziest of them all was a lonesome older Australian fella riding up the Wahan Valley an off-road route in the Pamir Mountains that runs along a river separating Tajikistan and Afghanistan. Uh, still on the Wakhan, nearing its end. I can literally, I, I could walk to Afghanistan. It's already a wild route for your average motorcyclist. So imagine for a cyclist riding up the track at high altitude while sunset was nearing and it began to cool down. The man looked like he was struggling a bit out there in the middle of nowhere. I stopped to have a chat with him and asked if he'd seen someone on a motorcycle earlier that day. All right, you saw Alexander. I want to find him. That's I've been hearing about him since yesterday. I saw him. I saw him about... Yeah? Yeah, he's four hours ahead maybe or so. When you travel like this, you end up hearing about other riders at a hotel or restaurant. Then, after a few countries, the same name keeps popping up and you think, hey, now I'd like to catch up and meet that guy. And as it turns out, you did see him earlier that day. Yeah. He's a nice guy. Yeah, so there you go, and he's going to meet up with his mate. I know all this shit about him, and I don't even know the guy. I'll tell you what, oh, look at that. just look at that. Yeah, it happens a lot out here. Right away, I can hear the man's Australian, having worked and lived there for a year myself before I left on this ride. And I asked the only question a man can ask out there in this far-flung corner of the world. North Americans, please cover your ears for a few seconds. I'll tell you after this question, so what are you doing out here, fucking cunt? <laughs> well, I'm racing to the next cigarette shop. <laughs> Yeah, oh really? Oh, I just dropped some of mine too. Oh, I got one for you if you want to. I'm trying to work out where you're from. That's not easy, right? No! <laughs> well, I can, can confuse you more if you want. <laughs> you just did. Pedro, back, Pedro, Pedro, I'm Jason. Back in, back in the street. I find out that the man was indeed having a hard time and was in dire need of something. Looking at his Herculean effort, riding off-road, uphill, against the wind, at altitude, and in the cold. I figured the man would be hungry or probably thirsty. But no, it was worse than that. The man was out of smokes. He had already given up the last of his cigarettes to a guard at the previous military checkpoint. These are sprinkled along the way in the Pamir Mountains, since the region can be a bit of a hotbed every now and then. I had also given a handful of cigarettes to the same guard, that cheeky little bugger. But unlike the Aussie cyclist, I still had more than a few left. We sat down and had a moment while smoking our ciggies and talked about our travels and the region, all the while the sun was setting behind the mountain ridge. Two guys from completely different backgrounds, usually separated by half the world, now speaking the shared language of madness. It's the mad ones who are truly interesting, and in my experience you meet them on the road and not in some city hostel talking in cosmopolitan platitudes. Instead, they speak salt of the earth poetry. Oi mate, I'm out of bloody smokes. And of course tries to pocket your lighter. Obviously. <laughs> you parted ways since the day was ending soon, and this is the time when you look for a place to stay or a spot to pitch a tent. One of those brief interactions that I've never forgotten, since over time I found that it's not easy to find people who speak your language. Take it easy. Ride on, Aussie man. Ride on.